Hey, what's up guys? I'm Scott from MuscularStrength.com and it's been about a month since I finished my 30 days of 100 pull-ups a day and I'm very excited to share my results with you guys. As you know, I've been experimenting with nuclei overload training since January of this year when I released my first video. I did 100 bicep curls a day for 30 days and then my next experiment was 100 power shrugs and 100 calf raises a day for 30 days. And I talked about my results in those videos, just like I'm gonna do now, but it's only in the 100 bicep curls a day video, which was the first one, where I go into mega detail about the science behind nuclei overload training because repeating the same information every time would just get, well, repetitive, right? But unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, I will have to talk a bit about the science today because there's quite a bit of misinformation being spread about what nuclei overload training is due to very poor research as well as manipulation of studies and videos on the topic and I know you guys are going to ask me about it in the comment section so I have to address it. It is what it is guys, you're being misled on something that's actually very interesting and could help you because talking shit and trying to stir up drama seems to be the only thing that gets views and makes the most money on YouTube right now. So first of all, 10 sets of 10 reps is my experiment and it's not the core foundation of what nuclei overload training is and once I explain this, everything will fall into place. The overload in nuclear overload training doesn't refer to training volume or overtraining. It refers to overloading the muscle with more nuclei over time and it's very important that you understand this difference. So the video in question, I know you guys are going to bring up in the comment section, obviously, is from Greg Doucette. If you already train correctly and you do nuclei overload training, you're a moron. He immediately starts his video off by calling everyone who thinks nuclei overload training works morons and then explains it away as 10 sets of 10 reps for a month because he did zero research before making his video. And from my perspective, thanks to the overload and nuclei overload refers to training volume which I just explained to you is not the case. Again, he's bashing it for drama and views, not to help you guys. But we'll get back to Greg in a minute because this video is about 100 pull-ups a day for a month and my results from it, not him. Now, I'm a pretty fit and functional guy. I mean, I'm not repping three plates for reps like my boy Austin, but I can handle 15 to 20 pull-ups in a row on any given day and I have a muscular back. But when I first started my 30 days of 100 reps a day, by the time I got to my fifth set of 10 reps, I was smoked, I couldn't do any more. 50 to 60 reps was my limit before I started using a band for assistance, and if I wanted to keep my rest periods around 45 to 60 seconds max, I had to use the band, right? But that's fine guys, nuclei overload training is not about weight, it's about daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly volume, remember that. However, by week two, I was already able to hit my 10 sets of 10 reps without assistance, and keeping my rest periods around 60 seconds. I was actually really happy with how quickly my body adapted and I felt and still feel much stronger in pull-ups as well as other back exercises. But what were the results, right? Well, if you compare my photos, and these are relaxed, not pumped, from March 4th to April 4th and then to today's photo, there isn't a massive difference, but there is some. Not to mention I already had great mind-muscle connection before starting my 30 days, but by the end, I would say my mind-muscle connection improved even more, even if just by a small amount, and that will transition to other back movements, making them more effective. Also guys, when I train back now, the pump has been amplified quite a bit, which is most likely due to the better mind-muscle connection, and I saw the same improvements when I did this for biceps, traps, and calves as well. So the final results of this experiment was it successful? Well, this is where your boy Greg got everything about nuclei overload training wrong in a weak attempt to try to bait me into an online YouTube drama for money and views and not keeping your best interests in mind. Now, I go much deeper into the science of this in my 100 bicep curls a day video, as I mentioned earlier. And I suggest you watch it before commenting below because I don't think you guys are the kind of people to be biased and make false statements based on opinions instead of actual data. I know my community is smarter than that. But here's a quick recap. Nuclei overload training is not a secret technique to build muscle fast. 
It's not, and I never claimed it was in any of my videos. In fact, I still believe the results or growth I've seen in my biceps, my traps, and my calves, and now my back are directly due to going from a time in my life where I wasn't training hard to drastically increasing my overall volume with full body workouts and applying the nuclei overload 100 reps a day challenge. Let me explain. I moved to Florida in 2018. I had to pack my house and my gym, drive from New Hampshire to Florida, and then got stuck in an Airbnb for six months. While in that Airbnb, I was stressed out of my mind going back and forth to the construction site from my home every single day. And when we finally moved in, I then basically had to rebuild my entire life and my business and build this gym that I'm in right now. So training during that year and a half, and even a bit before the move, was very sporadic at most. Maybe two to three times a week, just trying to keep my head above water, basically. It's only been in the last seven to eight months where I've been more focused and dedicated than I've been in years, and right now, I feel like I look the best I've looked in a long time, or ever, right? I'm a solid 190 pounds right now, and still pretty lean and functional. You guys have seen the full body workouts. They're intense. But don't get ahead of yourselves, because I know what you're thinking. Scott basically just explained away his recent gains as not being from nuclear overload training, but from being consistent and just training harder. Well, again guys, that's not how nuclei overload training works. But then again, all of that time off where I wasn't training as intense or couldn't train does relate to one of the underlying principles of nuclear overload training as discussed by Team 3D Alpha, and that's detraining. Now, the reason why I know Greg was trying to bait me into YouTube drama with his video is because of two things. Number one, because in his first video, he talked about 10 sets of 10 reps. Nuclei overload training is basically, you just pick a body part for say, a month you're gonna train it and do it like crazy for a month. So let's say biceps. I do 10 sets of 10 every day for a month. Nuclei overload, I'm gonna overtrain my biceps and then it's gonna be forced to grow and repair and get bigger and then long term, it's gonna spark my body to be jacked and huge. Which as I mentioned before, is my experiment and not the basis for understanding nuclear overload training and how it works, like not even close, guys. But he never said my name and with all of you stuck at home right now, I thought a much better use of my time was continuing to create home workouts for all of you. So I ignored it, who cares, right? But then what happened was that his first video didn't get a response from me, but he did catch the attention of Jonathan Megan from Team 3D Alpha, who has been educating you guys on nuclear overload training for free on YouTube for years, like since 2011, and he was pissed with all the misinformation that was being spread, and so he made a response video. And then Greg made a response video to Team 3D Alpha, which brings me to the second reason I knew his original intentions were to bait me because he used my name in his tags. So that confirmed it, like really, come on. So what is the basic definition of nuclear overload training then, right? Well, it's not 10 sets of 10 reps for 30 days, bro. A proper definition of it would be this. Nuclei overload training is the process through which we're trying to get satellite cells to activate and donate their nuclei in response to muscle damage or high frequency rep training like blood flow restriction training in order to surpass your myonuclei domain limit so your muscles can hold more mass. Not once in my videos, did I say this is a secret technique for fast muscle growth? And neither did Jonathan. So then why am I claiming my weight went up and my muscle mass increased? A lot of you have been commenting on how much better my biceps and traps look now in my recent videos. And I agree, there is definitely a noticeable difference. You can't deny it. So what happened? Well guys, think about the true meaning of nuclei overload training. I went from being detrained to training with large amounts of volume. I basically reinflated, or a better term would be muscle memory. You see, when you stop training or aren't training as hot as you normally do, you lose size. We all know this. But the nuclei don't leave. The muscle shrinks, but the amount of myonuclei in the muscle stays the same, and it's the amount of nuclei you have that determines how much mass your muscles can hold. So essentially, my body is reinflating due to the more intense training as well as boosting my daily calories. 
Guys, take a look at me back in my two reasons why your biceps won't grow video from 2013. My muscles look way more dense and it's because back then I was training way harder. I just had more time to dedicate to training back then. But even in that video, I was still only about 172 pounds. But as of right now, seven years later, I'm 18 pounds bigger. Is it all muscle? No, but definitely quite a bit of it is. You see guys, true nuclei overload training is something that happens over years and years of training. Take any sport or labor intensive job. Usually the muscles that get worked the most are the most developed. And then when a proper workout program is applied, those also seem to be the muscles that seem the most growth and look the best, right? But why? It's because of years and years of hard work and dedication that over time continue to bring more nuclei into the muscles that were trained the most. Dancers don't have amazing legs because when they were kids, like five, six years old, they thought, whoa, maybe I might have amazing leg genetics when I get older, right? <laughs> But for some reason, the majority of dancers have well-developed glutes, legs, and calves. Gymnasts are the same way. Look at their upper bodies of some of these guys. They are insanely developed because they do a lot of work that requires a lot of upper body strength and the body adapts. It's not a coincidence, nor does it fall outside of what we can determine using common sense. But how does this relate to you? That's what's most important. Well, let's take new lifters for example. You've all heard of newbie gains, right? A lot of you have experienced newbie gains if you're an advanced lifter watching this video. This is someone who is untrained, which means that they don't really exert themselves too much in their day-to-day -day life, and it's very likely that because of this, that they're also way below their maximum myonuclear domain limit compared to someone who is active. And by active, I mean maybe not a bodybuilder, but someone who plays sports or has a labor-intensive job. But this is why new lifters grow quicker. Their bodies are way more sensitive to muscle damage and mTOR, and the response is the rapid fusion of surrounding satellite cells, dumping all kinds of new nuclei into the muscle. But as you reach your myonuclear domain limit, the newbie gains slow down, and your rate of muscle growth is much slower because that's what happens when you're natural, right? That's what it means to be a natural. You'll continue to make gains, but at a much slower rate. So is there a way to reignite these newbie gains? Well, yeah, but not in the way you think. And that's where nuclei overload training comes in. Basically, what we're trying to do with this technique is utilize high training volume for 30 days to try to trigger as many surrounding satellite cells as we can to donate more myonuclei into the muscle. But as each day goes by, the satellite cells become less and less responsive to the high volume training. And so at the end of the 30 days, we need to detrain so our muscles can become once again more sensitive to muscle damage and mTOR. And this is why the rest period is so long, around 10 to 12 days off from training that muscle group you just did for 30 days. Think about it like this, guys. You ever not go to the gym for a few weeks and then the first day back, everything feels heavy and the next day you're more sore than you've been in years, right? We all know this feeling. Well, that's because you essentially detrained your body and made it more sensitive to muscle damage and mTOR and most likely gained more nuclei in your muscles as well because of it. See, you thought missing the gym was bad, but you may have inadvertently sparked more overall growth. And that is the real goal behind nuclei overload training. It's to increase satellite cell activation and myonuclei donation. Hence the name nuclei overload. It's about trying to increase the nuclei in the muscle in 30 days not increasing the muscle size. It's about trying to increase the nuclei in the muscle in 30 days, not increasing the muscle size. But some of you will see some growth, and if you do, that's great. Just don't expect it, right? For example, I never trained my traps as hard as I did during those 30 days of my experiment with power shrugs. So I truly believe I saw some actual muscle growth because my traps are a lagging body pat for a reason. I never trained them hard, and it's not just inflammation. 
because that was months ago and my traps still look great. Let me also say this, before I moved to Florida, I bulked up to like 185 pounds and I looked way too fluffy, I hated it. I was holding too much body fat in my abs and my lower back and decided that I needed to trim back down to 178 to 180. But now I'm sitting at 190 pounds and look leaner than I did at 185 pounds. But why? Well, because if you truly understand the principles of nuclei overload training, it's pretty obvious. Without even knowing it, I was training and detraining my body over the last few years because my move from New Hampshire to Florida made my workout so sporadic from week to week that sometimes, like I said, I would train four times a week, sometimes three times a week, and sometimes zero times a week. And because of that, I gained more nuclei in my muscles, which means now they can hold more mass, which is why I look stronger and leaner at 190 pounds. So I wanted to end this video by answering some questions from you guys that I got from my IG story. So if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you follow me at Scott Herman Fitness. First up is mbanks56. I know guys, sexy Instagram story screenshot, by the way, right? <laughs> And he asks, hey Scott, is it all right to do nuclei overload while in a deficit? If so, should we stick to smaller muscle groups? Guys, if you're adding more training volume to your workouts and you're trying to grow, I don't think being in a deficit is a good idea. You're going to need those extra calories from being in a surplus to repair and recover from your training. For me personally, once I started my nuclei overload for my biceps, my hunger went through the roof and I listened to my body and I gave it more food. The second question is from Hussam Halak, and he asks, 100 pull-ups a day, isn't that harmful for the back muscles? I mean, there is no time to rest at all. Well, the short answer here, your body will adapt. Think about people who have like labor-intensive jobs. They don't have rest days when they're sore. If they wanna make money and feed their families, they gotta go to work. Also, when you do these reps, you're not killing it as hard as you can for 100 reps, guys. But your rate of perceived exhaustion per set should be around seven to eight on a scale of one to 10, or else you won't really recruit all your high threshold motor units and corresponding fibers, and as a result, won't get a satellite cell response. So you want each set to count, even though the weight is moderate. So about one to two reps shy of failure per set. And if you do feel too sore to train, just listen to your body and take a day or two off. It's not that big of a deal. The next question is from Shavakno. About nuclei overload, what is the best slash optimal way of applying it? Right now I'm training three or four times per week, full body, and doing nuclei with light weights only for biceps. But should I incorporate more areas to the nuclei since I'm using light weights? Or maybe up the weights on full body and just keep them light for nuclei, but just one area. So I'm full body training as well. And what I did was just eliminate the body part I was training for nuclei overload out of my routine. But when it comes to body parts, like for example, biceps, they're still involved in all your back movements. So I did have to lower the intensity a bit on my back exercises and be a bit more cautious of my sore biceps during them. But at least for me, I didn't have to lower the weight too much where it negatively impacted my back exercises. Also, for the most part, I would do just one area at a time, but I did, however, do traps and calves together in my last experiment. My thought process was these are two areas that can take a beating and they won't interfere with each other. But again, just listen to your body, guys. And the last question is from HLD underscore 06, and she asks, maybe you covered this a little in your other nuclear overload training video, which I did watch, but that feels like ages ago. I mean, it was, it was January. <laughs> But my question would be, do you think it's worth doing for someone who is somewhere between beginner and intermediate? What about someone with a little more weight to lose, but trying to build muscle in the process? So my answer to you is that if you have a lagging area and you wanna work on it more to help it develop, sure, you can apply this technique. But again, because this is not an instant muscle growth technique, it does take weeks, months, and years to bring more mononuclei into your muscles. So, for example, when I was little, I always wanted a big chest. So when I was like eight, my dad bought me push-up bars, and I would use them every single day. I still got them in my gym right now. I would even bring them to wrestling practice, so when all the other kids were doing regular push-ups, 
I couldn't make mine hotter with my push-up bars. And I'm telling this story because I know for a fact that my chest is one of my best features, and it's clear to me that I was doing nuclear overload training as an eight-year-old kid. It makes sense. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure before you leave, you tap that like button, and of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Also guys, I know we're all still stuck at home with no gyms to go to, so if you're new to my channel, you can click this link right here, and it'll take you to over 70 at-home follow-along workouts. They're all follow-along style, and after trying them, you'll quickly realize that I enjoy pain and suffering. <laughs> because they're intense, and I show it. Stay safe, guys, and as always, more good stuff coming soon. See ya.